and nothing will go higher than knowledge. No, Akbar. And uh, no nation can rise above the level of its scholars. Mm. So Allah we need to appreciate this from this. Allah this Akbar. Point. Allah Akbar. So if we really need to be serious nation, and we really need to build our nation, hmm. we have to be so serious about our education. Hmm. We have to take our education seriously. No, and therefore, any attempt to neglect the educational sector, the way we are doing now in Nigeria, hmm. I'm sorry to make this point on the screen, I think we are not going to go anywhere. No, because knowledge is the basis of superiority. No. Knowledge is the basis of development. Yeah. Hmm. And that is the reason why Malaika were made to prostrate to Adam Allah. 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 Now the second point quickly, Imam, we don't have time, is the issue of arrogance. No. Arrogance. Arrogance is this superiority complex. Hmm. You feel I am higher, I'm better hmm. than this person. And that is what led Satan to go astray. Because when he was commanded to prostrate to Adam, say, how can you make me prostrate to this thing you created from mud? Hmm. While you created me from fire. <laughs> you can see the twisted logic. <laughs> it doesn't know that Allah can do whatever he wants out of whatever he wants. So therefore, at all time, Try as much as possible to be humble. To be humble. If you are humble, Allah is going to raise you as And insha if you are haughty and arrogant, Allah is going to debase you. Allah because Allah says al in Hadith al Qudsi, Al Kibriya or Dai. Hmm. He said the Al Kibriya or like arrogance is some of the, my attributes. I don't know how to put it better, but the Ima are here to, to talk about that. He said, Whoever try to compete with me in utilizing that Rida. In utilize in 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 being that arrogant, kasong to huwa la ubali. I will deal with him. Huwa la ubali, and I will not be bothered. Another narration. Allah Akbar. Man takbara wada'ahu Allah, wa man tawada'a rabahu Allah. Allah Akbar. Whoever is arrogant and haughty, Allah will debase him, will make him just as useless as anything. Allah Akbar. And whoever humbles himself, Allah will raise his name. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. That's the point of um, elevation, and that's the point of ikhlas, this is the sincerity that the Quran is talking about. May Allah make it easy for us. Jazakallah mean, khairan. Now, Imam, over to you well, with the timing. No, Alhamdulillah, we will stop to uh, eating this morning in Abuja by 21 minutes after 5, and our uh, starting time for iftar still remains 6.38. And uh, those who are fasting in Damaturu, I think that should be in Yube State, 4.59, they will stop eating this morning, and 6.27 will be their own iftar time. Those who are fasting in Maiduguri, 4.54 is the time they will stop eating this morning, and 6.21, they resume back. If you are fasting in Oshogbo, Odeomu, and Environ, 5.34 is the time that you will stop eating this morning, and 6.53 is the time for the iftar. To the fasting Muslims in Port Harcourt, 5.26 is the time they will stop eating this morning, and 6.38 is the time for them to resume back. Those who are fasting in Sokoto will break their fast by 6.56 in the evening, but they will stop by 6.28 this morning. May Almighty Allah accept it from each and every one of us. Amen. Thank you very much. Accept it from us and grant us the best of reward. Mm -hmm. On that note, let's uh, take some messages, and uh, other segments will follow suit. Please stay tuned. We are still here. Because this is a whole life. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to a brand new season of Maggi Diaries with 30 episodes of exciting and delicious Maggi recipes. Join us as we discover, experience and learn from amazing women as we celebrate our food, our culture and the Ramadan values of sharing every day during this holy month. You don't want to miss this season. Assalamu alaikum jama'a. Barkam da shugowa shirubu na Maggi Diaries. Shirin da ke kawo mun na fasawo hingir kai kirke a ko da yaushe. Sunana Ummi Nubu. Wasu kan ce cin abinci mai gina jiki kan kasance mara dandano. Sam 
wanna magana tasha bumbo. At I read that ni the kumas na drain the kegabana, then girka muk abinchi me daddy, the kumagina jiki. Mukasan chetari, dobinu namku sirka and the ki pita de giriki me daddy, the nagata. I want no water, me albarka. Jamaa, kudaka chew. Abinchin then if so. Mizenya fatam kwa kan yangku kam mama na me daddy. Today I'm going to be cooking oven baked potatoes and chicken. So I'll be using my potatoes of course. Nayan Kashi, young can wages for the chicken. The chicken is a chicken. She is a chicken. She is a chicken. She is a chicken. She is a protein. She is a chicken. 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 Wanang itu pun ada akan bermesasi ya jikena. Zaku ia para ada dungkul mesta, kokuma megari. Kokuma zaku ia sah megari, dan kokuma mesta. Kokuma ada ni zang hat ayanzu, zang hat aku diving, dan dungkul lah, dan kokuma megari. So zang je umai kahanuna, insaya nadek yo orang dari sabda kapung aigit. Inda zami bake it ini ni so acikyo one nam baking dish ini zami. Insan kaza ya nada daddy dada nanu kuma. Sepu wain ke kaza ku ya dekwa gana wain ke na sabu da sabta. Kuma kaza ya nada daga chicken abu van deke da sana da ringi na jiki achiki. So ya nzuma nziba kaza ma achikyo oven dish ini da zami kasa achiki. Zami doku maigimu mita uraro buda ya doku ma na chicken eh. Saya mau pas hasil acikin mazuba. Asyik nama nak per pasal mana mazuba. Saya nak dan naga mazan tak kau gali kita jinjan nen nawa sih ma. Dan mazuba si acik. Asyik nama nak mazuba. Saya naga mahat tak kazan tu kena. Saya nanti yang hat dah si dan kalen. Saya mau tak kau ya jum acik mazuba si. Kalau kita idam menazba wah, zabu juga sih idam mungga mazba. Sekarang mana tata? Atau guni tak kerja jaga sih sih mazam mazba. So kalau kita ina hati nawa, senadran acikin kazana kapan nak dora sih kau muta. Sabo dah sih wana girikin, ina hati nawa ni kapan ada dora sih kau muta. So zam dan tak kau mampu kadang, mungkin nyerpa akai. So dah zai dik yang mana ya jinda muka sa akai. So kuma wana spices de, si mada madam baru pada kena, kuda ukur aciki. So mu juju ya si, ya si nama nasha si apa kaza ya dapu inazataji. Kalau kuma tapa dangkalu menagebe, idam munga mahat dakaza, zang hat dah mana dangkalu, so mu dapu rasi tarat dakaza, masa si aciki um over. Zaku ga kaza nama ya nara dan saga agi apa agi pe. Now, yeah, yeah, cash me so that the Abu Bunda Mika Shapa Ajikis and Nadranda Mika Shapa Ajiki. So, my gee chicken in the Mika Shapa, the my gee mister, this is the chicken cousin now. So, that one can not say harder than the same, harder than Kalin said, the Basha cousin, I think I should get you. My favorite food. What can I tell you about my mom? Delicious meal. which is made from soya beans and other ingredients that bring us the best in our recipes. So I don't have a favorite food. Because everything my mom makes is perfect. My G, 
we cook the difference. Gashimun dauko dankalin namu shi ma za mu zuba mai sanadarin dan dano a ciki kafin mu hada shi cikin kazan mu mu sa shi a cikin oven din mu to za mu dauko wannan bushashen yajin namu da aka murmu mu sa shi za mu zuba za ku lura dankalin nan ban cira bayan shi ba ba damuwa idan baka cira bayan dankali ba amma ka tabbatar ka wanke shi sosai da ruwa ya fita duk kasan da ke jiki ya fita sai ka yanka su yadda na yanka za ka ma iya yanka shi dai duk yadda kake so sa mai yaji za mu dauko spices din mu shi ma mu dan zuba mai kadan ku tuna kar ku cika spices din ku saboda already mun riga mun sa spices a cikin kafin shi ma sai mu dan dan ko dan mai kadan mu yi dan yarfa akai so da shi ma spices din zai hau kai sai za mu dauko magi mu mai tauraro shi ma mu zuba in ka zuba magi sai ka jujjuya shi ka jujjuya shi a jujjuya so da kowanne zai dauka sai ku za ku iya jujjuya shi amma sai ku bi a hankali so da kar ku fasa dankalin ku muna son shape din nan na wake ya tsaya akai za mu dauko dan parsley shi ma mu zuba a cikin dankalin sai mu jujjuya shi to yanzu za mu hada dankalin da shi kazan so za ka gyara kazan na kan gefe da gefe sai ka kwaso dankalin a hankali ka zuba shi akan kazan Na san wasu ku za ku ce ban yi amfani da albasa ba kuna da gaskiya amma dai albasan na ban yanka shi kanana ba shi albasan a hold din shi zan dauko in sa shi a gefe saboda ina son aroma din albasan ko ya fito ba wai ina son na riga ganin albasan a ciki bane ba okay so yanzu zan wanke hannu na sai na dauki wannan baking dish din da kaza na da dankali ke ciki na sa shi a cikin oven so gashi nan na wanko hannu na dan dauki shi baking dish din gaba daya in kai cikin oven din mu domin gasawa kuma zai iya kaiwa zuwa minti 30 ko kuma har in kun ga kaza ku da dankali ya nuna yanzu mun aje potato mu da kaza a cikin oven yana da kyau idan ka ga ma girki ka kwashe duk kwanonin da kai amfani da shi a dan tsafcetta gurare a dan tsa kuma wani sirrin abinci mai dan dano a cikin wannan watan mai alfarma shine amfani da kayan miya sabo is very important to eat a very nutritious meal during this month of ramadan so that you can store your energy and be healthy potatoes is brown tender and crisp while the chicken is well done so i'm going to plate my chicken now with potatoes so the dankalin ya da ku kaza shi ma ya da ku an fara sa dankalin a gefe dan dauko kaza kun ga kaza mu ya riga ya ya da ku saboda ka ya 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 dena fito da ruwa an an matsa shi kuma kullun abinci yayi kyau ya fito sosai kun ga saboda mai amfani da sabon kayan miya abincin namu ya 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 yi kyau a ido kuma na tabbatar a baki ma sai wanda ya dan dana ya ji abincin da na fi so me zan ya fada muku akan yan kukan mama na mai dadi da kuma dan waken ta mai dadi What I can eat is the white and soya. The white and soya is not that much in Ganchi. They keep back the mana chicken to the kitchen center. Mama, I need to have chicken and beef soup. Then the dirty mama needs to die. My dear, dirty my in Ganchi. we cooked the potatoes and the chicken for 30 minutes is not a very hard um dish to make it's very simple and i'm just going to garnish with greens because they say it's colors you eat healthy meals and of course we, we all know the secret of this meal is a uh, maggi stuff and the maggi chicken seasoning that we use 
this is a wrap for today. Thank you for watching this episode of Maggie Diaries. And I hope you stay healthy during this holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak. And with the number on the screen, you can join our WhatsApp chat box to catch up on all of the episodes of Maggie Diaries this season and to send Ramadan greetings to your friends and family. Lotus Bank, banking the bayat amali da kururuwa. Lotus Bank, na muku lalai da marhaban da shugowar wata azumi mai alfarma na Ramadan. Kamar yadda muka fara azumi a cikin farin ciki da san juna, ya kamata mu ƙara nuna so da tausayi ga wadanda muke tare da su. Ramadan Karim. Sako daga Lotus Bank. Dah lah saya ingin yang hotel. Bismillah. Ya wa. Check as kostad. Yes. Wow. Cut. Amat saya nak ambil sarota. Nasang abu buah masih ingenci. Ajaran kostad kuah. Check us costad, she needs a key again. Need a yalina. Mizzy Hana Kuma Kujaraba. Anna Salmon, check us costad, lonely dabandabang. Vanilla, chocolate, banana, demilic, Zaku Ia Salmon Su, a man young casual need a shaguna, a part in Kasarnan. Hmm. Check us. When the shiny in a touching costad. to fulfill your Hajj obligation but cannot afford to pay at a go, you need not to worry anymore. Jai's Bank PLC in collaboration with National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, and the State Pilgrims Welfare Boards have jointly introduced Hajj Savings Scheme to help you fulfill your wish. Whether you're a katurera, a farmer, a petty trader, or a parent who wishes to start saving for their children and be getting profit at the same time, this scheme is for you. Visit any of the Jai's Bank branches or Hajj Commission offices near us to you to enroll or go to www.hatchsavings.jaisbankplc.com to register. For further information, contact info at jaisbankplc.com or call the number 070 <laughs> The management of NTA Channel 5 Abuja accordingly invites you to the 20th anniversary of Sahu Lai on NTA and its second Ramadan lecture. The epoch-making event with the theme Islam and Nation Building comes up under the distinguished chairmanship of His Royal Highness Alaji Dr. Yahya Abubakar, CFR, the Itsu Nupe and Chairman Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers. The program is scheduled as follows. Date. Saturday, 1st April 2023, equivalent with Ramadan 1444. Venue, NAF Conference Center, Kadu Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Special guest of Anna, Engineer Sheo Hadi Ahmed, Executive Secretary, FCDA. Guest speakers, first lecture, The Complete Muslim. Speaker, Sheikh Mohammed bin Uthman, Imam Sahaba Mosque, Kundila Kano. Second lecture, the role of Muslims in nation building. Speaker, Sheikh Abdurrahman Hakmat, National Missioner and Saruddin Society of Nigeria, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Highness, Alaji Idris Musa MFR, Serki Jiwa, Mother of the Day, Hajia Rekia Gambo Ilyasu, Director of Tertiary Education, Federal Ministry of Education, Chief Host, Malam Salihu Abdul Hamid Dambos, Director General, NTA. You are all cordially invited. Management. Announcer. Ya Jabbar, Ya Allah, Ya Mutakabbir. Thank you very much for staying tuned. This is still Sahu Live on ATA. And Alhamdulillah, we are grateful to Allah for the grace and the opportunity to witness this month of Ramadan and to do the bit that we are able to do. May Allah accept it all from us in manifold. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we were talking about some aspects of. Uh, the portion uh, translated and uh, commented on 
by the scholars in the house. We left them to lay a little more emphasis and to expatiate the aspect of sincerity that we were talking about. Let me just start with the next slide. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, in the area of a class which simply defined as being sincere and sincerity no. is key to success in all aspects of life. No. Mm-hmm. At the family level, is key. One should be sincere with his partner, his wife. The wife should be sincere with the husband. Mm-hmm. There should be sincerity in terms of relationship. Yes. One shouldn't be corrupt and corrupt the sincerity or, or, or on its own side, uh, there will be no actually uh, that confidence if there is no sincerity. Mm. When it comes to Ibadah, which is key, mm. the aspect of worship, Allah will never ever accept any act of worship that is denied of sincerity. Mm. That's why he says, Wama umiru, illa liya he has never commanded for anybody to do a, any act of worship except that act of worship is accompanied mm-hmm. with sincerity. Allah. And the Hadith of Rasulullah is very categorical about this, where he says, Inna mal amalu, wa inna mal amalu, All actions are built on sincerity. Allah is not interested mm-hmm. in your face or mm-hmm. your dress. Mm-hmm. Allah is more concerned with what Thank you very much for that, um, Imam Fouad. Yeah, well, I think uh, Imam said it. What is in your heart is what actually matters. Mm-hmm. And that's what determines your relationship between you and your God. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, you can't deceive anybody. Or you can deceive everybody. Yeah. But you can't deceive he who is going to judge your sincerity. Mm-hmm. So it means you have to do this. Many people are worshipping Allah because of what they could get alone. And that's why when you see them, they are very serious. And the moment they get what they are looking for, and then you discover that everything is not the way. It means they know what they are doing. It's not sincerity. It's about what they are looking for. Thank you very much. That means uh, there are books, there are laws, there are regulations, but people need sincerity to bring it out where in the right manner. Okay, let's hear from you, Pro. Arab used to have an adage that says, My fika yakruji min fik. Whatever is in you will manifest from you. It will come out from your mouth. Meaning whatever you do is animated by your intention. So if somebody has a corrupt mind, his action will totally be corrupted. So if you are sincere in your purpose, and you are doing things for the sake of Allah's word, Allah, Allah is going to put blessing on it. Mm-hmm. And it's not the impact of your effort, but rather the quantum of blessings that Allah placed in your action. And that is Wama Ramaita, Isra Maita, So if you are sincere in facing your duties, in discharging your assignment, you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. Because the success lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he grants it only to the Muklisin those who have sincerity of purpose in their activities. No. Now, a quick point to make here is that how do we attend the class? Mm. It's very important. I have a practical tip of this. Mm. The way you get a class is to go back to that hadith, hadith of Jibreel. Akibirni and al-Ihisan. Say, anta abud Allah ka anna ka tarahu fa illam ta kun tarahu fa inna hu yarang. At all point in time, have this kind of feeling of the presence of Allah the Almighty. Mm. That Allah, I'm like I'm seeing Allah. You know, if the, let's say the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, or even the president elect, invited you to do an assignment before him and he's there watching you, you know, you will do it to the best of your ability, mm. to the highest perfection level, so that he will really, really appreciate you and maybe give you an appointment. <laughs> so at all time when you are doing any action, assume that Allah is there watching you. <coughs> Just try to, to visualize that this is Allah, I'm mm. seeing him in my, in my front. Mm-hmm. Now, if you cannot see him, then put it at the back of your mind, but in the way, Araka, he is watching you. Mm-hmm. So that's what to give you a class in a simple term. Mm-hmm. Because one of the predecessors, righteous predecessors, was asked, what is the, what is the secret behind you, uh, the level of prayer of Allah that manifests in your salat? The kushu, which was said to be of Allah. 
Mm. He said, well, because when I entered prayer, mm. I visualized that Allah is there, is in my frontage. Mm. Where I'm doing sujood that I'm looking, I'm seeing Allah there. Mm. Then at my back, I'm visualizing that death is trying to overtake me. Mm -hmm. It's just waiting for me to say assalamu alaikum, and that will be the last prayer I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why the prophet, the prophet used to say, Sallu salat al muwadda'i. You pray like the prayer of somebody who is now bidding farewell mm -hmm. to the world. Mm -hmm. He said, on my right, I used to visualize that there's Jannah. Mm -hmm. On my left, the hell. Mm -hmm. And beneath my feet is the Surat. I'm standing on the Surat. Mm -hmm. So I enter salat with this kind of, you know, visual mindset, and that would give me a class. Alhamdulillah. Oh, may Thank you very much. We've learned now. Let us all be sincere. What is the opposite of sincerity? Hypocrisy. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So if, if, if you didn't know what sincerity is, you should know that you should not be a monarchic. <laughs> and uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you for letting us know that it's in all aspects of life, family life. Uh, economic life, political life, social life, social life. everything. <laughs> Let us be sincere. May Allah have mercy on us and guide us right. Thank you very much, our viewers. We the program continues. Um, let's um, uh, hold on for the other segments of uh, the program for today. And I see how it's coming up, and the, the exigent is also standing by. May Allah accept you from us. Stay tuned. This is Saul Live 198. Salam alaikum. As we now say, in our name, Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Wahda, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I seek refuge in Allah against the accursed shaitan. I begin in the mighty name of Allah, they were gracious, they were merciful. All praise is due to Allah, we thank Him. We seek His forgiveness. We ask Allah to continue to bless our teacher Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to bless members of His worthy household, His courageous companions, and to bless all those who will courageously follow their footsteps till the day of accounting. Good morning and welcome to Saur Life. Welcome to the month of mercy, the month of blessing, the month of forgiveness, the month of connection with Allah, the month of Quran, a glorious month, the like of which Allah has not created. This morning we are going to look at the rights of a Muslim over himself. These rights are just two that I know. The right of a Muslim as a human being over himself. And the right of a Muslim as a Muslim over himself. As a human being, he has the right to establish his superiority on earth. And therefore, not to worship himself or others. When a Muslim worships himself or others, he automatically worships shaitan. What does Allah call Adam? What does he call human beings, his progeny? Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah, when he wanted to uh, establish Adam on earth, he had created him. But when he wanted to establish him on earth, he informed the angels by saying, Inni ja'ilu fil ardi khalifa. I want to create on earth. Uh, he didn't say, I want to create. Astrophila. He said, I want to establish. I want to put. I want to place on earth. And I like the syntax. The, the place and the purpose came before the action. Inni ja'ilu I want to place Fil Ardi on earth, Khalifa, a vicegerent, an ambassador, a representative. In other words, his ambassadorial duty as a human being is limited to, to the earth. He is not an, an ambassador for Allah, he is not Khalifa in heaven. 
is not Khalifa in the sea, is not Khalifa in the air, is Khalifa from Ardi on this earth. Allah says, I want to put, I want to position, I want to establish on earth Khalifa. If we are, if Adam was the Khalifa of Allah on earth, automatically his children will be Khulafa, Khalifa on earth too. So we, we know the story, the angels virtually protested at this uh, you want to place there on this earth where well, we will shed blood, we will commit atrocities, we will be corrupt, and we praise you, we celebrate you, and Allah told them, I know what you don't know. So, automatically too, human beings are very generous of Allah on earth. The last hour of Surah al -An, Allah says, وَوَالَّذِي جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَ الْأَرْضِ وَرَفَعَ بَعْدَكُمْ فَوْكَ بَعْدٍ دَرَجَاتِ لِيَبُلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ سَرِعُ الْعِقَابِ وَإِنَّ لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ It is Allah who has placed you here. He has made you here. He is vigilant on earth. He raises you one above the other in terms of gift. In order to test you over what he has given you. Surely, you are not swift in punishment, but is also forgiving, merciful. So this is the first right that you have over yourself as a human being. Now, as a vigilant of Allah on earth, being a human being, the child of Adam, you have only one right that you must give yourself, and you must struggle to give yourself that right. No one will give you, especially Shaitan, who wrestled, who fought with your father, and the enmity that you did, or uh, that you have for a parent, will automatically extend to the children. The enmity of shaitan with Adam has automatically extended to us. So shaitan will not allow you. That is why Allah wants us. Allah ma'adi ilaykum ya bani Adam anna ta'abudu shaitan illa ulakum adu mubi wa na'abuduni aza siratun mustakim. Allah says what means. Have I not warned you O children of Adam, never to worship Shaitan, because he is to you an avowed, clear enemy. And that you worship me, this is the straight path. He has misled Jibilan Kathir. He has misled multitudes. A number of human beings, a number of other beings, Shaitan has misled. Don't allow him. To mislead you. So the right of a Muslim is to recognize this, to accept it, and to work towards it. What is it? That I am Allah's vice Nobody is superior to me. I am representing Allah on this earth, therefore, no human being has the right to tell me how to live. In that case, I cannot follow a constitution drafted by another human being. That human being will be playing God in my life. I believe in Allah is my Rabb, is my Lord. Therefore, if only Allah has the confidence, the competence, the authority to tell me how to use my life, use my word. Whatever I have on this earth, only Allah must tell me how to do it. That is Ibadah. But if I allow myself to legislate for myself, then I become a God to myself that I worship. And that is the basis of crisis. Once you worship yourself, you, you do whatever you like. When you do whatever you like on this earth, you may get the consequences, you may avoid the consequences, you may escape the consequences, but you will not escape in the hereafter. And there must be another life. You must come again. So, that's why Allah says, on the day of judgment, there are no men terror. Whoever transgresses, he allows the life of this world to lead to the leading. He will be entertained with fire. But whoever fears 
the meeting with his Lord, when I'm left to an hour, and he forbid for himself the pursuit of his passion, his own pleasure. Once you pursue your pleasure, you want to play politics, anyhow. You want to pursue your job, anyhow. You want to look for money, anyhow. You don't care what else people's blood will be spilled, what are people's life will be taken, what are people who cry. That is self-worship. And this self-worship is satanic worship. It is the worship of shaitan. It is shaitan that makes you to assume the position of God in your life. So your duty to, to us yourself is to liberate yourself. Your right over yourself is to liberate yourself and establish yourself, assert yourself, after recognizing yourself as a last vice-gerent on earth. You don't have to fear anything. Shaitan is just a gene. And a gene is inferior to a man. He is fire. You are water. Water quenches fire. But Shaitan has a trick. He has a means of making you fear him. And Allah has said, don't fear him. Fear Allah alone. So you have this right as a human being to establish yourself by worshipping Allah alone. Even if Shaitan would not like it, even if you yourself will not like it, even if other people will not like it. Next time, inshallah, we are going to talk very briefly about the second right that you have over yourself. That is your right as a Muslim. Your right as a human being is that you establish yourself as a last vigilant and you worship no other. When you do so, you create paradise on earth. When you worship yourself or others, you worship shaitan. When you worship shaitan, you create disorder, the corruption, the spilling of blood that the angels fear. This is what will come out of your life. Then you will live a miserable life. May Allah not make you live a miserable life. May Allah enable you, empower you, and uh, capacitate you to be able to liberate yourself and live a full human life. Akulu kaidaza wa stakfuna ali wa lakum. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Lotus Bank, your dynamic bank brings you warm greetings this holy month of Ramadan. As you observe your fast diligently, please remember to share Ramadan love and kindness to all around you. Ramadan Kareem from Lotus Bank. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to NTA Soho Live. I am Salatu Sule and my co presenter is Mariam Lehman. Previously on the Human Development Series on NTA Swahur Live, we talked about the importance of conflict in marriage, the need for introspection in healing those deep cracks that we sometimes find in our marriages. We also talked about conflict being very healthy in marriages. Oh, Sister Salatu, the last time we had this discussion, you must have ruffled some feathers because you talked about conflict and you said it's good to quarrel. Yes, I, I said think, please quarrel. Yes, I think you provoked a lot of people <laughs> that day. I don't want them to think us to be troublemakers. Are you sure we are not? <laughs> You're not supposed to know that. No, seriously. When I said please quarrel, I meant it. And I know some people will be wondering, why would you ask people to please quarrel when you're talking about trying to heal cracks in marriages? I know we went into an explanation a bit. But what you need to underline is conflict is good. The quarreling is good if you know how to do it the right way. Absolutely. It's knowing how to fight. But we'll talk more about that. All I ask is stay with us till the end of the series and then you will understand why we say conflict is good. Then you may choose to disagree, but I think most people will understand completely. Absolutely. I think what's important though is to understand the state of your marriage. What is your state of mind and how do you view your marriage? Um, so what is the state of your marriage? For some, they see their marriage like a war zone. Um, Sister Salatu and I over the years have counseled people who have been married and when you hear how they describe their marriage, you hear some would say um, she's very heartless or he's very ruthless. Um, he doesn't have uh, any patience and they use words that are very, very hurtful 
um, when they describe, or you can tell there's so much pain in them. Um, they describe their own spouse to be so antagonistic, very malicious, and you can't believe that this is their spouse. So we describe the state of mind of this person, that they see their marriage as a war zone. Um, they are in that fight mode. They give no space at all, no mercy. There's no generosity, no compassion in the marriage. They go for blood when they fight. They go for the jugular. Uh, and they make sure they don't show their weaknesses either. They make sure that if they are hurt, they don't show it so that their spouse does not use their weaknesses against them either. Mm -hmm. So what is your state of mind? So one is looking at your marriage like a war zone. Another one could be seeing the marriage like politics, where you're playing politics. There is a struggle for power and influence, mm -hmm. um, where there's also game playing. Unfortunately, this game playing can truly be a dangerous game. Some people even use um, intimacy as a way of playing games. You give or you take back to get or win certain things. So you can give or take away or hold back just to get your way or to hold back something from giving or being able to get or win favors. Um, also, you play games like sweet talking. You tell your spouse certain things to make them feel good because you actually have something you want to gain. Um, an a, a hidden agenda, exactly. Um, another thing too when you are in that mode of politics is you start to have factions. You can have the kids take sides. They are in your camp or your spouse's camp. Relatives also take sides. Um, In-laws, friends, they pick sides, unfortunately. This is when you are in that mode of politics. Another frame of mind or state of mind that you may have towards your marriage is you see your marriage like a hotel. Seeing your marriage like a hotel is that you give something, but you're not fully committed to it. So you are not 100% committed to your marriage. Um, you go elsewhere as you please. You come when you want. So you are almost more committed to things on the outside than you are committed to your marriage. You are not showing full loyalty or fidelity to the marriage. Um, you come and go as you please. You don't give 100%. You hold back. And so that is another way where you see the marriage and your state of mind as if the, how, the marriage is like a hotel. Yeah. yeah. Another frame of mind is when people see the marriage as though it's a prison. Mm -hmm. This is where one or both people feel trapped, yeah. they feel they have no choice in the marriage, exactly. they don't have that sense of independence, yeah. yet they, and they desperately want to get out, mm -hmm. but they feel stuck. Yeah. That's where this feeling of being in prison comes from. They stay in the marriage anyway, maybe because of the kids, because of the status, because of the family, you know, like families are so tightly connected that they are thinking, how can we break up this marriage? Mm -hmm. Or you stay in the marriage because you have this ideal of what your marriage ought to be like. Yeah and you're not getting it anyway, but you say, I never imagined that I would be divorced. So you are torn between wanting to get out and staying in, then you feel like you're in prison. And you're miserable in the meantime. And you're miserable, Absolutely. very miserable. Mm -hmm. The other way people see the marriage is when they see it as though it's a roundabout, mm -hmm. with no exit. Exactly. So when, that's when you know you ask someone, so how's marriage? And the person says, oh, it's, ju it's just there. You know, you are just there. The marriage is just there. Empty. Unlike the person who may want to get out or the person who may be fighting, you are not even fighting. Yeah. You've reached the point where you say, you know what? This is what it is. I'm not going to try. I won't try to put anything into it. I won't hope to get anything out of it. I won't even make the efforts to get up and leave. You basically just exist. You are just existing. Yeah. You are probably not even quarreling or arguing about anything. You are not planning about anything. You and your spouse are kind of like roommates. That's right. You are not strongly connected, but you are going to try and not kill each other. Exactly. So it's, it's, that's why we call that, it's a roundabout. You just keep going round, no improvement, no development. Mm -hmm. Now the positive mind frame mm -hmm. when it comes to the state of your marriage is where you see your marriage as though it's a garden mm -hmm. and you and your spouse are gardeners or you see your marriage like a team sport yeah. 
and you and your spouse are teammates on the same side, fighting for the same things, wanting to score a goal and wanting to lift each other up. And you have a mutual goal. You have a mutual An goal. Yes. Yeah. You have supporters of your team yes. and they are there cheering you on. Yeah. Um, you are gaining from the marriage as much as you are giving to the marriage. You, there's mutual commitment between you and your spouse to this marriage. Yeah. The marriage is growing. You are growing in it. Yeah. You are guarding it. You are protecting it. And I think the key word there is you are both happy and you are both hopeful about it. Yeah. Now, when you look at the states of marriage that we've discussed, the hotel, the roundabout, the war zone, the campaign, the um, prison, and then this one of the garden or the, call it the team sport. What's the state of your marriage? Which of these states is it closer to? Why is it important to answer this question? Because it affects how you would handle the cracks. Exactly. Your frame of mind actually determines how you're going to respond to conflict. Mm -hmm. That's what will determine whether when we say conflict is healthy, we're talking about you, or when we say conflict is healthy, then we definitely don't mean you. It really boils down to the question of your state of mind. Mm -hmm. Once you've identified the state of mind, you've got to step back. You absolutely have to step back. We know your marriage is probably at that nasty level. Mm -hmm. It's reached the stage where you've probably threatened divorce or you've talked about it. And we know that probably physical harm has been done. Trust has been destroyed. Words have been said that you cannot swallow. Mm -hmm. And things have been done that you can't undo. What we are asking now is just press pause and take a step back. And if you wake up tomorrow and find somehow the problems have been solved, how would you behave towards your spouse? If you find out that somehow the past has been erased and the problems you used to have never occurred, how would you treat your spouse? Now when you get to that point where you are imagining this, I really want you to imagine it. The problems are solved, they are over. What would you do differently? Can you take one small step, do one small act that's independent of your spouse's behavior? It's a small private act, but it's something that shows you are actually looking towards the future. You are trying to go from the war zone or the campaign party or the hotel or the prison to the garden. I need to emphasize again, it's small, it's a private act, Something like maybe your spouse does something that usually annoys you. Every day it aggravates you and every day you quarrel about it. But because you've decided to take a step back, on this particular day, today, this day, you choose not to be aggravated. You choose to say, okay, no problem. Or usually your spouse will try to get you interested in something and because you're in that frame of mind where it's a war zone or it's a hotel, you don't show interest mm -hmm. but you deliberately show interest. Now I know this is for some people this is like kind of hard to take in. Mm. When we come back inshallah in the next episode, Mariam will go into how to go about this, what to do to make sure you are not endangering your safety or your peace of mind in your attempt to try and seal the cracks. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you will join us on our next episode, inshallah, on the Human Development Series on NTS Soho Live. From Salat to Sule, it's Assalamu Alaikum and have a blessed day, Ramadan Mubarak. From me, Mariam Lemu, may Allah accept our ibadah, inshallah. We'll see you next time. That is verse number 32 of uh, Ali Imran that we are still discussing. We took part of it yesterday. Uh, say, obey Allah and his messenger. But if they turn away, Allah does not love those who reject faith. Your loved one in the life of the world errs, commits mistakes, has wrong assumptions, 
We may be right this time and be wrong another. But Allah commits no mistake. Allah is always right. The one you love in the world when you commit mistake of anything to them, any misunderstanding may arise and they will forget completely your kindness and sacrifices to them as if you have not done anything. But to Allah, where you commit any mistake, he relents towards you, he pardons you as if you have not done any wrong. Our love is not immune from motives. You love your father for a reason. If the father is harsh, nakedly or whatever against you, that love changes. If your daughter disrespects you, your love for her diminishes and you may turn away from her. But Allah, when you do wrong and you turn to him, penitent and repentant, he accepts you, he welcomes you, he pardons. In some cases, the bad that you did is turned into good in reward. Your loved one would only call when you call. At times when you refuse to call, they will not call. When anything happens and you are not good to them, they will retaliate in like manner. It's only when you visit that they visit and so on. So our love is not devoid of motives. Our love one to another is a means to an end. There is something that is keeping the love. Mutual benefit or whatever. But Allah loves unconditionally. You mean nothing to him, but he loves you. He loves you because you obey. Not that there is any benefit that will come to you, to Allah. You cannot benefit Allah in any way, in anything. When he loves and grants you something, it's not because he is afraid of any harm that will come to him from you. He offers, he gives, he grants because he loves you and that duty, that obedience that you have done towards him. And at times even in sin he relents and forgives if there is that intention from you and regret of what has happened in the past and you are ready to make amends. If you remember him, he remembers you. Unlike the world, if you don't call, I will not call you. If you do not visit me, I will not visit you. But Allah says, إِذَا ذَكَرْتَنِي ذَكَرْتُكْ وَإِذَا نَسِيتَنِي ذَكَرْتُكْ Oh, my servant, if you remember me, I remember you. If you forget to remember me, I remember you. Only Allah can do that. And there is nothing like his love. Getting the approval of human beings is impossible. For one to love you, at times they put you under surveillance, they test you, they try you to see whether you are worthy of their love or not, whether you are sincere or not. Allah's love is unconditional. 
He loves, He gives, He forgives. Your only part to attain that love is obedience. Once you obey, and that obedience, the benefit of the obedience comes back to you. If you avoid alcohol in obedience to Allah, what does that benefit Allah? It benefits you. You protect your life. You will not be drunk and drive your car and kill yourself because of that intoxication. Your wealth is preserved because you will not spend it uselessly on alcohol. If you avoid promiscuity, for example, what does that benefit Allah? You protect your health, your honor, and your lineage. Nothing goes to him. The benefit is to you. And by doing that, you earn his love, you earn his bless, and you earn his mercy. So obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger is what you bring to the table to earn the love of Allah. When we meet tomorrow, we shall start a very long discussion on those that obeyed Allah and the messages that he sent to them, the families that Allah has honored because of their service and obedience to him, the family that Allah has honored and made leaders of all the people of the world because he has chosen them, because he has anointed them. The family of Imran, where you have the mother of Maryam, Mary, salam. I wonder if that story is captured in any other scripture. The mother of Mary is mentioned in great detail in the Quran. Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. And we shall see wonders how Allah has explained the beginning of that lineage of that honored family until the birth of Jesus and the message that he brought to the world. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Tech and Culture. This is a show where we discuss how technology is impacting Islamic culture, especially uh, in a negative way. My name is Shamsuddin Abdrazaidado, and today we are going to be uh, looking at how uh, technology is affecting um, the concept of shyness in Islam. You know, um, Islam is a religion which has been built on shyness and even the hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu wasallam talks about um, al-haya min al-iman that is shyness he is part of faith that is why islam is being termed uh, being a conservative religion so to say but with the advent of technology a lot has changed and a lot keeps changing every day muslims are now being exposed to harmful content violence especially ex sexually explicit content and um, a host of others all things to social media which has reduced the level at which we think and do things intellectually it has reduced our attention span and we barely concentrate any longer as early as the year 2000 northern nigeria was more conservative than it was today um, even the kind of content that is being pushed out in the movies especially um, the the movie industry, especially the kids' kids of yesteryears, has some elements of shyness in them. But today, all these cultures are almost long gone. There used to be a saying that um, Garangashi Haramni, that is, um, the use of attachment to female hair is Aram, which is all it is forbidden in Islam. But unfortunately, some of this culture, it is what we have today. That say I think is even dead already. Islam advises lowering of our gaze while talking to females, especially um, the non-Maharabs. But unfortunately today, um, we know this has degenerated to a level whereby we can't even um, say any longer 
all things to the culture of um, the need to be assertive, the need to be vocal, the need for the voice of females to be heard. TikTok is one powerful tool that is depleting the level of shyness, especially among um, Muslim women in northern Nigeria. This is something that is a sorry state for us. But we believe at iMedia Digital Hub that with concerted efforts from leaders of Muslim communities, these Islamic cultures can be revived. In our own humble way, at iMedia Digital Hub, we've had and created content on Islamic cartoons, Islamic histories like history of um, Sayyidina Umar and the tafsir of our uh, Professor Isa Anipantani. I hear yourself you also can in your own little way. Invest more in creating content that will be beneficial. This way you are preserving the heritage of the Muslims and what the Muslim culture are like uh, is for the generation yet on board. So you can subscribe to our platform at iMedia Digital Hub on YouTube so you can have access to more of this content. Many thanks for watching today's episode of Tech and Culture. We hope that this is beneficial to you. I will pray that may Allah ease our affairs and help us to revive the Islamic culture. My name is Shamsuddin Abdul Zagirado. Kindly like and share and subscribe to our platform if you're watching from our YouTube channels. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Trendy and upwardly mobile personality in search of quality and male clothing and accessories. Then Everyman Clothes and Accessories is the place for you. Everyman Clothes and Accessories is a one-stop shop for designers' shirts, suits, jeans, blazers, ties, cufflinks, as well as top-of-the-range shoes and sandals. Our highly acceptable EVM shirts are still the best in town. You will equally not regret trying the new addition to the EVM family. Our mastery of the clothing business is being brought to Life through our various designs using quality fabrics and materials. Whatever your choice and taste, every man will make it happen. Visit us today at Suite 3, second floor, May Debino Plaza, Michael Opara Street, opposite Grand Ibro Hotel, Wissizun 5 Abuja. You can also reach us on 081-3410-7609 or 081 Email everymanevm at gmail.com. Instagram at everymanclothes. Website www.everymanclothes.com. If it is men clothes and accessories, we stock it. Allahumma jalna min taqai shahr Ramadan. The management of NTA Channel 5 Abuja accordingly invites you to the 20th anniversary of Sahu Live on NTA and its second Ramadan lecture. The epoch making event with the theme Islam and Nation Building comes up on the distinguished chairmanship of His Royal Highness Alaji Dr. Yahya Abubakar, CFR, the Itsu Nupe and Chairman Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers. The program is scheduled as follows. Date Saturday, 1st April 2023, equivalent with Ramadan 1444. Venue, NAF Conference Center, Kadu Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Special guest of Anna, Engineer Sheo Hadi Ahmed, Executive Secretary, FCDA. Guest speakers, first lecture, The Complete Muslim. Speaker, Sheikh Mohammed bin Uthman, Imam Sahaba Mosque, Kundila Kano. Second lecture, The Role of Muslims in Nation Building. Speaker, Sheikh Abdurrahman Hakmat, National Missioner and Saruddin Society of Nigeria, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Highness, Alaji Idris Musa, MFR, Serki Jiwa, Mother of the Day, Hajia Rekia Gambo Iliasu, Director of Tertiary Education, Federal Ministry of Education, Chief Host, Malam Saliu Abdul Hamid Dambos, Director General, NT. A. You are all cordially invited. Management announcer. Ya Jabbar, Ya Allah, Ya Mutakabbir. Yo!
ولقد آتينا إبراهيم رشدا من قبل وكنا به عالمين إذ قال لأبيه وقومه ما هذه التماثيل التي ما هذه التماثيل التي والله لا أكيد أن أصنامكم بعد أن تولوا مدبرين فجعلهم جذاذا إلا كبيرا لهم لعلهم إليه يرجعون قالوا من فعل هذا بآلهتنا زين لسان العربي بكتابه العظيم وجعل العلم بهذا اللسان وسيلة لمن أراد أن يفهم القرآن فقال سبحانه وتعالى إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون الزخرف حملا لا تملوا اللغة وصلى الله وسلم على من أنزل القرآن من أنزل القرآن باللسان العربي بشارة وإنذارة العربي الأمي صاحب الكلمة البالغة وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين والمسلمين المنتشرين في الدنيا من مكة إلى مقالة أما بعد فيا أيها الإخوة حظيت اللغة العربية بشرف عظيم اتنزل بها الكتاب الكريم كتاب رب العالمين على الرسول الخاتم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي مكان الله عز وجل منها أي تمكن وصحابة كريم وسلف الأمة رضوان الله عليهم على النهج ذاته في العناية باللغة العربية تكريما وعناية وتشريفا وعندما نتأمل عناية القرآن الكريم باللغة العربية نجد عدة آيات تنص على نزول القرآن العربية وهو شرف وأي شرف لهذه اللغة 
أن تكون اللغة التي اصطفاها الله تعالى لمخاطبة عباده حيث وصف القرآن بكونه عربية في ست آيات وهي قول الله تعالى في سورة يوسف إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون في سورة طه وكذلك أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا وصرفنا فيه من الوعيد لعلكم ت... لعلهم يتقون أو يحدث لهم ذكرى في سورة الزمر قرآنا عربيا غير ذي عوج لعلهم يتقون في سورة في سورة فصلت كتاب فصلت آياته قرآنا عربيا لقوم يعلمون في سورة الزخرف إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون في سورة الشورى وكذلك أوحينا إليك قرآنا عربيا لتنذر أم القرى ومن حولها الآية Nigerian company, winner of the award of excellence for providing exceptional Hajj and Umrah services, and for being the best performing tour operator to both domestic and international markets. Comorel is among the leading providers of Hajj and Umrah services, ensuring every detail in the contract arrangement is provided for in a top notch and noble manner for every pilgrim. I have observed increased efficiency and in communication relative to the last time I was with Comorel and also my mother and my son was also with Comorel in the I think uh, the, some few years ago so I will say that in terms of effectively communicating within between the management of Comorel and the pilgrims that has in, uh, increased significantly and once there's an increased flow of information, people are ready to cooperate and mix coordination better. That is one. Number two, the quality, the general quality of the service has also been upped. And when I say general quality of the service, I mean the attention, the response, the preparation, and even the accommodation. In terms of the transportation, the organization was seamless. We moved. We didn't waste time. I recall maybe the last time I was in Woodcomerel, we waited longer trying to get more pilgrims come on board at the right time and all of that. But this time around, like I observed, we just spent a few, five, ten minutes and everybody was in on the bus and we're off. And then we were dropped very, very close to the uh, tent, which I have never seen anyway. The, my past experiences on both sides, even on, as a VIP pilgrim of uh, government, is that you do some trekking to get to your tent after where the bus stops you. So we got privilege on uh, Thursday, that's on the 8th of uh, Zilhija. I've also observed the quality of the accommodation has more than doubled. Uh, yes, pass uh, one can. I still remember the days that here in Mina it was sand. We used to come with our premats as state pilgrims. You buy your premat for two reals, you back it up, and you come here and then spread it on any space you find. Uh, that was for the experience for state pilgrims. But even within Comoral, what we used to have was just mattresses. And uh, uh, now we have moved. The tents are of better quality. The, we have mattresses, even the mattresses, the quality of mattress has changed. Now we have bed and it's well rocked. And uh, 
the numbers in the room is virtually the same maybe some one increase or so but the space is quite comfortable because for my own location where if we want to pray in the room every every one of us can put her mat by her bedside and still pray and there's still space so uh, yes the quality of service has increased significantly <laughs> Lotus Bank na mukun lale da marhaban da shugowar watan azumi mai alfarma na Ramadan kamar yadda muka fara azumi a cikin farin ciki da san juna ya kamata mu kara nuna so da tausayi ga wadanda muke tare da su Ramadan Karim sako daga Lotus Bank College Academy Lugba Abuja, a fully integrated education institution with a mission to discover, unleash and fully develop the potentials in the heart, mind and body of your child. Operating the Nigerian curriculum infused with Islamic knowledge, every child at College Academy is specifically tutored to be a problem solver. Our teaching staff are highly trained and motivated to bring out the best in every child. Our classes are Kretsch, Arabic speaking router 1 to 3, primary year 1 to 6, and junior secondary year 7 to 9. We are Dar es Salaam Hifs program is specially designed to teach full Quran memorization, spoken Arabic, and it also includes full boarding and junior secondary school education. Also offer Quran memorization, professional training in software coding, professional karate training, weekend tafis classes and efficient school bus service. Register your child with us as our mission is ongoing. Our address is plot 990 CRD Amak layout behind Lugbe Plaza after House and Market. FHA Estate Lube Abuja or visit our annex campus at plot 566 Real 1 Lukman Street behind FIRS office Katampe extension Abuja. Telephone, our website, email, College Academy Abuja. Discover, distill, develop. <laughs> The management of NTA Channel 5 Abuja accordingly invites you to the 20th anniversary of Sahu Lai on NTA and its second Ramadan lecture. The epoch-making event with the theme Islam and Nation Building comes up on the distinguished chairmanship of His Royal Highness Alaji Dr. Yahya Abubakar, CFR, the Itsu Nupe and Chairman Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers. The program is scheduled as follows. Date. Saturday, 1st April 2023, equivalent with Ramadan 1444. Venue, NAF Conference Center, Kadu Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Special guest of Anna, Engineer Sheo Hadi Ahmed, Executive Secretary, FCDA. Guest speakers, first lecture, The Complete Muslim. Speaker, Sheikh Mohammed bin Uthman, Imam Sahaba Mosque, Kundila Kano. Second lecture, the role of Muslims in nation building. Speaker, Sheikh Abdurrahman Hakmat, National Missioner, Asaruddin Society of Nigeria, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Highness, Alaji Idris Musa, MFR, Serki Jiwa, Mother of the Day, Hajia Rekia Gambo Ilyasu, Director of Tertiary Education, Federal Ministry of Education, Chief Host, Malam Saliu Abdul Hamid Dambos, Director General, NTA. You are all cordially invited. Management, 
أنا ونصار يا جبار يا الله يا متكبر Um, taking us on the Nasiha segment, and uh, we also learned from the exeget Sheikh Abubakar Siddiq, and we also took some presentations from the children. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, may all Allah continue to support and sustain us. And the scholars in the house who are discussing matters of sincerity, matters of um, uprightness in everything we do, so we can keep away from shaitan. And um, I pray Allah will always let us triumph over the wiles and guiles and deceptions of shaitan and the matters of this dunya. May Allah continue to strengthen us and strengthen our iman and so that we can, you know, develop our, you know, iman mozu, so to speak. And um, Allah make it easy for us. Uh, we want to um, proceed with the discussion we were having yesterday concerning uh, financial matters in the lives of uh, a believer. A Muslim is not to eat what is haram, that's what is unlawful, is supposed to engage in legit uh, businesses, is also supposed to, you know, do goodness to others, pay zakat, pay his tax as it is as a citizen, and so many more responsibilities. But the person on whom so much responsibilities have been placed is also expected to 100% eat only what is uh, lawful for him. And this uh, may sound quite difficult in this modern day where, you know, for some people anything goes. So that is what we want to get more advice from, from our scholars in the house so that we know how to go about our matters and our businesses and, uh, you know, doing what is right and keeping away from whatever is wrong. Um, thank you very much, uh, my <coughs> sheikhs, for uh, staying tuned. Well, let me pick it from Sheikh Tajuddin. And um, we, I wanted to kick it starting. Matters of our finance. As a sheikh, I believe that, um, like that. Uh, imams also do businesses. Yeah, you have done very well. <laughs> imams do businesses. I don't want to done. quote names. You have done very well. Subhanallah. <laughs> I'm sure our viewers will have an idea of what you mean by that. Yeah, you see, the idea is that. Uh, Imams, of course, not the small, small imams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know the big, big ones. Mm -hmm. you see, the area of finance is key to success in this life. Mm -hmm. There is no way you live in this life and you assume or claim mm -hmm. you are not materially inclined. That is mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. It is angels whom Allah has designed and created not <coughs> with anything to do with finance. Mm -hmm. They don't eat, they don't drink. They don't sleep. Their they children don't go to they school. Don't marry they don't marry at all. They don't have children. <laughs> no school fees. No, no, no house rent. They don't pay house rent. They are created from the light. But man, as you see him, Allah knows him better than himself. Mm. He created materials for him. Mm. You can see why he must be materially inclined. So that is not an offense, it's not a crime. Hmm. That's why Allah says, moderate it. I have moderated it for you. Seek for it. Don't cheat. Don't consume. Don't be corrupt. No. But seek for it. And verses are numerous. Hmm. Friday could have been a day of rest hmm. for Muslims. Hmm. Yes. But because of the importance of seeking for this world legally, <coughs> you are allowed to be in your office until when the Azan is called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at Bay transaction. Mm -hmm. So you, you see, Allah knows of be in the office. Until when the Azan is called, mm. you can go and perform your prayers. That is the best for you if you mm. know. Mm. This is yeah. the most knowing. Mm. But is that what so much? You see, Fantasia, it, means that, it means when Allah mentioned bay business, that is the thing you cannot live without. Mm. It's a hint that, yes. yes. So you can go for farming, you can go for your business, you can be in your office, you can mm. be in the bank, you can be in the market, you can be anywhere. 
cease from it, go to the mass. And look at it again, as mm. Professor has rightly mentioned. Mm. Immediately after the Imam Tabernet prayers, mm. you also go back to the business. No, there, so no, there, there's no khutbah after the Juma. No khutbah. Just go, go to the business. <laughs> because you need to survive. Mm. You need to eat. You must eat. Mm. And your family too. You, you, you go to heart. You so do the guy. You know? So this is the reality mm. of whom we are <laughs> seeking. <laughs> but look another aspect. Long as we are looking for, don't cheat others. Mm. Don't even say I'm this, not a Muslim. So no, 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 no. Don't cheat anybody. That's what Allah says. Ya you are living in Amanu, Lata Kunu Amwala Kumbai Nakum Bibat, El Anta Kuna Jarata, Anta Radi Minko, Walata Tulu and Fusaku in the La Academy Korahima. Look, Allah is is making an analogy of consumption of somebody's well with, with killing a soul. Mm. Mm. The, the meaning of that verse is more broad. Yes. Yes, yes. Consumption of that somebody's well. Other people's rights, other people's wealth. Right. Right. Mm. killing them, of mm. course. Mm. You know, so yes. it, it, you seek for your own, mm -hmm. you don't attempt operation others. Allah mm -hmm. Do this if you do this too, you are going to have Aljanna or you are still alive. Allah. 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 Because you have Allah. dignity, you have honor, you feed your family, you take care of your children, you assist your neighbors, you assist the orphans, do all this. It is money. Allah. This program that is holding today, you are saying, it's money. <laughs> Okay. Those gadgets you are seeing is yes. finance. It's a point Just look at the way the way presenter <laughs> sat comfortably. <laughs> as if he's a minister of state. It's funny. You think it's just like that? You know this adage in so you, you can see it came up for us and Imam Tajid and Akam of Laji lecture. All we put in Laji in order to show people that okay, doesn't uh, match. Uh, like, uh, 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 no, no, no. Uh, uh, Thank you, Professor. Uh, <laughs> prof, you are, <laughs> you are prof. No, we know they are one. We are going to divulge you to the world. But more serious, yes, yes. you must seek for your source of income. Yes. It's an Ibadah mm. Mm. Allah rewards you for that. Mm. So even going to work is Ibadah? Yes, it is. That is even it is. Yes, that is it is. Ibadah. You seek, you it is. sleep at home, and you I want people uh, to come and feed you there? Allah. Yeah, yeah, you are claiming you are a good Muslim? No. And then you don't consume, don't corrupt, don't... Mm. don't look, Allah has made it very balanced. Mm -hmm. Allah. Seek for your own, don't take others. Oh, that's Maintain your mm. lane. Mm. Mm. Allah Akbar. I can see. I can see. You are so much in agreement. What do you know? You know something. I know so many things. And they say when you see something, say something. No, at times when you say something, it might cause problems. Okay, you just know it, and you know you know. Wait, last time I checked, Imam Fuad, you do facilitate organizing some training, even for imams, on the importance of self-reliance. Maybe you should tell us a little. No, we will discuss more about that. But I think. Exactly. Let him combine the. Okay, when it is time. All right. So, what essentially what we are trying to say is. Um, people should be up and doing mm. and seeking livelihood mm. in a halal way mm. is actually part of act of worship mm. and it is very necessary and very important for a person mm. to work hard to earn mm. lawful um, you know earnings mm. all right please prof and imam bear with me i, I want us to go to alabibia time now <laughs> so that you can have uh, more time to discuss <laughs> thank you very much Sheikh. you have really inspired us mm. and you have revealed a lot of things yes. just within this list no, uh, <laughs> I'm here to reveal it. <laughs> and you people who really <laughs> assisted in revealing a lot of things. So essentially, you get the point now. Let me keep it. Yes, let's let's uh, uh, take a 
you know, break. <laughs> let's uh, breathe a little and then we we'll come back. We we'll continue with Al Habibia time. Stay tuned. This is Zahu Live on NTA. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Thank you for not going away. It's been a wonderful time on the program so far. And then we are on to the um, Al Habibia time. Let's um, use that time to discuss more on this matter of, um, uh, you know, like we said, you, you sh a Muslim should not be corrupt. A Muslim should not eat what is uh, unlawful. And um, we work hard, you know. I want the prof, let me start mm. from you. And I, I want you to advise us. You know, people work hard yes. and some people work smart. Exactly. How do we not just work? Yes. People mm. were brought mm. up to, to, to work hard. Of hard work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, hard works. Yes. At <laughs> times. You know the F. It doesn't always pay. It doesn't always <laughs> You need to work smart. You, like you some people, you know that some, yeah. when a man knows how to work smart and even just ordinary Jalabia will show that yeah. this smartness. Yeah. Alan knows <laughs> best. People, people, people must know the difference. Yes. So, so the, in real life, it's not an ordinary Jalabia. Yes. You ah, see? Ah, because it's prof. It costs more than the what to Please, uh, Allahu Akbar. Uh, even should this prof is original alone. prof. <laughs> Please leave Shaykh alone with and you. let us look at this matter. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we're actually <laughs> brought up to work hard. <laughs> exactly. But with technology, with yes. so many things yes. now, I like the people prof. work mm -hmm. very hard and you they like grow too. old and die young simultaneously. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Somebody who has just 40 is having BP because exactly. of hard work. Please tell us, how do we get out of this? Yeah, that's very interesting, uh, sir. And uh, you know, uh, it's always better to work smartly. Mm. And you cannot work smartly without knowledge. Mm -hmm. and that is the importance of what we are discussing. Number the one. Commentary segment, actually. Mm. So we need to have the knowledge. We need to have the, uh, to have the technical know-how. Okay. Because even in the financial matter, there is financial interest. Financial literacy. Yeah, mm. Unless you are financially literate, mm -hmm. you will spend all your life suffering. It's not even hard work. Subhanallah. That's, that's my own definition. It's not hard working. Hard working is good. Mm -hmm. We should be hard working people. But suffering is not good. Mm. Because Allah's one Allah has nothing to do with punishing you. You see, there's a story behind this verse. There's one man known as Abu Israel. Hmm. This man made a vow, not that. No. Make a vow, promise to Allah, that, some, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is not going to sit. Mm -hmm. Look at the punishment. He is not going to take refuge under a shade. Ah. He will stand on the in the sun. He is not going to eat in the daytime. He will be fasting, standing under the sun. Hmm. And the Prophet was passing so a man, really suffering. He thought he was working hard in order to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, who is this man? They said, that was Abu Israel, the other Sulaiman. That's Abu Israel. He's a very hardworking man. He promised Allah that he will never sit in the daytime. Ta'abudan lillah, because he wanted to fear Allah and worship Allah. He also promised he will never break his past every day of his life. He will keep fasting. He will be fasting because he's a hardworking man. <laughs> and, and he promised he will not go and hide under a shade. Hmm. He wants to be exposed to the sun heat. So that he, he felt the torment, you know, the chastisement. You will make Allah to reward him more. And not only that, so that he fear the hell. Hmm. If you cannot survive the sun heat, how hmm. go to more of the hell. Hmm. Then the Prophet uh, told the Sahaba, go back and tell Abu Israel, hmm. let him go and take refuge under a shade. Mm. Let him go and sit and lie down and rest. Mm. Because ma yaf allahu bi adhabikum. Shakar tu wa man. Should you suffer yourself? Mm. It's not hard working. Mm. To expose yourself to suffering. Mm. To hardship. Allah. Allah doesn't like hardship. Allah. And in Sharia, the number one issue that we detest hmm. is hardship. Allah. Hmm. And Mushakka Tajlibu Taisir is a popular Sharia shari maxim. No. It's a potential maxim. Hmm. Wherever hardship is there, there must be a relief. Hmm. Hmm. And that's why at the end of Surah Al-Allah, uh, mm -hmm. you call it Inna Ma Al-Yusran Inna Ma Al-Yusran The exegetes, they have a very beautiful analysis under this. You see, in Arabic, 
Alif Lam is definite article. Mm -hmm. And also the hardship. Mm. Then Yusran mm. is indefinite article. Yeah. So uh, the hardship, when you put definite article, is a non hardship. Mm. Mm. Against any non hardship, there are two beliefs. Hmm. Because Allah say in, in the bus was repeated twice. Yes. Mm. In the ma'al usul, the non usul, the mm. non uh, hadji, mm. there are is a relief hmm. which is unknown. It's only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah. of its quantum, because of its weight, because of its breadth, hmm. and because of its depth. No, um. There is a relief. Then he repeated with the same, po that hadji hmm. who are taking in the previous bus, there is yet another relief, not the previous relief. Hmm. And that's why the ulama, the jurist, yes. they coined a magazine saying that Lanya Galibal Osru Yusrain. Lanya Galibal Osru Yusrain. You know, hardship, a single hardship hmm. cannot overpower, cannot overwhelm two, two reliefs. Hmm. Hmm. The reliefs that are only even known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, whenever you see hardship, there is relief. Hmm. So, brothers and sisters, you don't have any reason whatsoever to expose yourself to unnecessary hardship. Mm -hmm. You can work smart with uh, with fintech, tech, fintechs. Mm -hmm. You can work smart with, you know, all these digital devices. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever in order to gain the, you know, material benefit of this work. No. It's necessary. It's necessary. Like we made a point yesterday, it mm -hmm. is meant even for the Muslim. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, enjoy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so go and reclaim what is yours. Mm -hmm. It is yours. Reclaim it back to you. The only, the only proviso is like the Imam was saying, it has to be in ethical way. Yes, has to be halal. So that ethical component, not even halal alone. Hmm. There are a lot of etiquettes, hmm. and this what form what, what form part of the ethical issues on the Islamic finance. Inshallah, so don't cheat. Don't, mm, don't do lie. Don't deceive. Don't do four one nine. Don't, don't, don't yahoo. To be hard. <coughs> don't scheme somebody out. Mm, don't ponzi. Yeah, even to be so much profiteering mm. is wrong. At, Excessive yeah, profiteering. Yes. Allah Akbar. The prophet says, Rahim Allah Abdan, he prays. Mm -hmm. Rahim Allah Abdan, mm -hmm. Samhan Iza Ba'a, Samhan Iza Shara, Samhan Iza Qada, mm -hmm. Samhan Iza Taqada, mm -hmm. and up to the end of what the prophet says. Mm -hmm. It's a prayer from the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that may Allah have mercy. Mm -hmm. And in another form they say, Nadar Allah Umra'an, may Allah brighten the face of the man, mm -hmm. who is so easy mm -hmm. while he is selling. He mm -hmm. doesn't want to haggle with you a lot. He will just give you a minimum, you know, margin of profit, mm. so that you will have another turnover. Mm. And it's also easy and simple when he is purchasing. Mm. He doesn't want to push you to a corner to the extent that you don't have any margin of profit. And when he is trying to recover his loan from you, seeking for recovery of loan, he mm. goes easy Allah. and simple. And when he is paying, paying the loan, mm. it's also know. easy and simple. That's a very, like very blessed person. Yeah. Uh, 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 Imam Fuad, there's a term, I think you mentioned it, financial education oh well we have all been saying it if you are religious let me let me let me lower it down to that level because it's religious that people think they don't work and it's in their <clears throat> system for them to assume they don't need to work in islam we do not have institution called clergy yes mm. unlike the other religion uh, we don't theater, have that so say these are clergy and which work are you doing that i'm a clergy that's the work you are doing mm. we don't uh, we don't have it's not that it's not a profession in islam <laughs> 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 so if you're an animal you should have something which you are doing that is source of your uh, livelihood mm. so if you don't have and the mosque is the one supposed to be paying you and when they are not paying you i remember my mom you say it's better you resign from there and you move to the market mm. god will not ask you how oh, why are you not leading people we ask where are you not taking care of your family mm. Allah Akbar. Mm. Allah Akbar. that's wonderful right? very instructive imam that's a very big point <laughs> So in other words now, some imams, I think they've devised a way of uh, starting up Islamia in the mosque. That is very good. But please help us tell mm. parents to pay them. Mm. You, you see that Islamia mm. is good when you have Islamia and you charge fees mm. completely. And you know this is your source of income. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Because you teach and you are paid. But you don't always rely 
Mm. Always on because you are a, a man, mm. then your source must be from Islamia. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not business. enough. It's yes. not sustainable. No, no, no. You may see Islamia yeah. business is yes, conventionally. Yeah. As we say, be the lie. Yes, they will mm. say that this man. Why? Why are you troubling us? Mm. Since ancestors, we know Islamia is <laughs> Why are you sending them out because they not give money? You are. Are you preferring money over the religion? So make, get a means of source of something more solid. Mm. Have a mm. farm. What? Uh, no, 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 Imam. I think, I think, <clears throat> I think it can still be useful if you, uh, uh, you know how to manage such an institution that will be mm. profitable for you. Exactly. That will be enough for you to actually make. I, I remember I make it you know, our uh, uh, school at the time when I discovered that I was with no somebody that is just does that, that kind of school. He's paying house rent. He's taking care of everybody from the Islamia. Yes. Look, I'm mm. not saying no. <laughs> I'm saying Malam should not. Mm. Just because they are inclined to marry himself, mm. and then he believed that that is the only way he can. Yeah. No, it shouldn't mm. be the only. Uh, oh, okay, way. okay, there okay, be strings, okay, okay. Strings, strings of income. Okay, okay. Yes. you don't have of business. Yes. Different types of income. Mm. Like what we are doing, we are exposing. Even uh, imams <laughs> to different uh, profession, exactly. to different skills, so that we even partner with some government institutions that train people in skill acquisition, mm. and after that training them, they still give them money to start so the business. Why I am condemning that is that if you have one thousand scholars in a city, mm. can they all have schools? No, 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 so no, no. Start no. giving scholars way out. Mm -hmm. Let them remove that understanding, which is my picking nature. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like any other. No, you know that's what we are doing. Yeah. We have even exposed it, so expanded it. Allow schools to be for few. Mm. Go but into other like Khalif, fields. Khalif Usman was a businessman. Mm. You know, Khalif uh, Abdurrahman bin Aou. Mm. Yes, a Bakar Siddiq. Mm. Mm. They are all into Go the market. Mm. And the, the, the imams, there are not more imams than those Sahaba. They are <laughs> not more imams than those Sahaba. <laughs> All right, please. Uh, but, but we are not being named imams. Because yes, no imams. Yeah, actually, it's 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 so uh, we just um, box them up and say because you are an imam. Mm. Uh, look what are you doing in the market? Mm. He knows this is my shop. Yes. Mm. And they'll be like, oh, so who will now lead us in prayer if you are here? Go and lead us. <laughs> <laughs> he will pray that in the market. He will mm. be the imam again. The market. <laughs> Allah <laughs> Akbar. Yes. If I, his business in the market. He will sell cheaply. Mm -hmm. That's right. He will not cheat uh, anyone. Hey, mom, let me give you a. It, it, yeah, it, there was, no, sorry, there was one man when they are selling this money. I don't know, it went viral. And they said it's a malam mm -hmm. that why people are sending or charging 1,000 naira or 5,000. This man was charging 50 naira. Yeah. Even everybody. In the, long queue, the long, long queue yeah. in, the, in, the, in the environment, they were, they, were they were praising him, they were praying for him. It, be, it became. So, yes. so he did it, he was making his money, and yet he made life easy for people yeah. around him. Is mm. it not better than somebody who will say, what is your job? Am I a <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank you very much, Imams. I'm happy it's Imams that are saying this. So. Yes, sir. The professor is an Imam. I will expose that Imam what you say. All of them, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Except me, I'm not Imam, I'm Ustaz. <laughs> <laughs> so what does Ustaz do? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Bro, what does Ustaz do? <laughs> no, I, I say Ustaz, Ustaz is close to Imam. Ustaz <laughs> <laughs> is very close to Imam. Ah, Alhamdulillah. Ustaz know every Sokola. Yes, we, we were really blessed with this discussion, and I do hope we had more time. But we, you know, we have to go for quiz now. So that's why we, you know, we, we wrap it on this segment now. Please don't go anywhere because we'll still be right back for the quiz segment. It's still Sahu Live on NTA. Assalamu alaikum. وإلهكم إله واحد لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم Lotus Bank Your dynamic bank brings you one greatest this holy month of Ramadan As you observe your fast diligently Please remember to share Ramadan love and kindness to all around you. Ramadan Kareem from Lotus Bank. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for staying tuned. We are still here and uh, eager to um, you know, go into the quiz segment. Let's hear Imam Fuad. What do you have for us? Well, Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> our quiz is still very much intact. But I'm afraid in the next two, three days, we might not be able to do quiz because our gift 
are going, I don't know whether they will be able to no, show. Sorry, something is coming up, inshallah. Uh, uh, something is really um, coming up. You see, you don't eat... It's coming up. Okay. Yeah. yeah, take it like that. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Inshallah. So, so it means Inshallah. In this we don't provide. <laughs> that is what we are saying. If the mom can assure you that something is coming up, yes. you know that one is true. Exactly. You know that one is coming up. Even though it's not from Imam, but it's coming up. Uh, you know, we, the member that Imam facilitated it yeah. is still it will come up. It's still reliable. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's still reliable. Whoever facilitated it, it will still come up. It will still come up. Uh -huh. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So it means be rest assured that. Uh, our quiz continue by the special grace of Allah. Inshallah. And today you have our uh, opportunity to ask question number one to ten. Mm. And please don't waste time. If you don't know, just tell us you don't know. So that you allow other people to be part. To be part of it. Thank you very much. So you can call the number uh, you have. It's um, right there uh, on the screen. And let's see who is our, should we say, lucky customer this morning. <laughs> or right, please try it again. I think I just lost a call there. Let me tell her. Make it easy. Um, it seems the lines have um, a life of their own this morning, but uh, we we'll still expect you to call in and then you can be uh, part of the program with us. Jazakumullah <coughs> khairan. Meanwhile, we are doing that. Let's um, uh, let's hear a little more uh, from. Uh, yes, the questions are from four to ten. No, okay. one to ten. One to ten. ten. Question number one to ten. Mm. Sorry. Yes, the, the we seem to have a little bit of issue with the network. That's why. So let's um, and we can use your reboot phone. all over again. <laughs> if I do that, we will we'll do quiz for the rest as, of today. Now we are saying nah. we are not saying that an imam that is comfortable. For instance, if you have a center, okay, in that center, like Ali Bia, for instance, mm -hmm. they promise to give imam, for instance, one point five million. <coughs> And they want to use all this time. Mm. This is mm. mm. to go to market. Into business physically. Mm. You can still go into business not physically. Okay. Very smart we are. Mm. Yes. But you shouldn't we'll do a musharaka. Yes. Mm. Musharaka. Mm. Mudara. 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 Okay. Mudara. Mm. 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 But physically, you shouldn't waste that time. They have already actually bought from. Yeah. Mm. Okay, because they are paying. But when yeah. when Iman doesn't have any salary. Well, it's a pity. He yeah. should go out. So he should go and for. Okay. Then. <laughs> right. I think the line is back now. Waalaikum <laughs> salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Sahu Live. Thank you. What's your name and location? My name is Muhammad Lawal. I am from Maru in Abuja. From Maru? Maru? Apo in Abuja. Oh, you are well, most I'm welcome. happy Muhammad everybody Lawal. is around. I will not say because you are not too old. Because everybody is around. I want everybody to participate. Yes. Feel free. Any question that I ask, anybody can answer it. We yes. don't mind. One to ten. <laughs> Pick any question from one to ten. Number, number five. Number five. five. What is the meaning of Ar-Rahman? Hmm. Yes. What is the meaning of Ar-Rahman? Ar-Rahman. Hmm. Merciful. Merciful. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Can you read it from the verse that from the surah that it comes from? That is popular because I'm in so many verses. Mm. Yes. Pick any anywhere you can find it. Mm. Um, Anybody can help you. Well, well, let let him translate. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, start from Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, and translate Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Mm -hmm. Okay, translate that. Bismillah mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Wait, wait. Translate Bismillah <laughs> You didn't hear that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now listen. Okay, that's where he was going. He wanted to insist that look. You you think I don't know this thing? Ar Rahman, mashallah. Let him translate Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Okay, yes. English. Bonus for you. Yes, are you there, Muhammad Awal? 
Hello, we, we can not hear you if you don't speak. Yes, yes. what is Bismillah Rahman Rahim in English? Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, is beneficent and the most merciful. You see, you see the beneficent uh, uh, Rahman, we ask you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Not I think you, you got What's right. your name? Mm. Muhammad al-Awwal. Muhammad al-Awwal. Al -Awwal. Al -Awwal. So you are the first Muhammad there? Yeah. Okay. Muhammad al-Awwal, Agaka. Agaka. Okay. okay, I can now understand. <laughs> I'm not disappointed. <laughs> I'm not disappointed. <laughs> uh, you first have a uh, packet, a carton of Indomie. MashaAllah. Uh, I don't know whether we have uh, cloth for meal. Uh, we can pick a shirt. <laughs> They tell you can pick a shirt from uh, every where? man. Every man. And then two yeah. copies of Quran. Two copies of the glorious Quran in addition yes, to that. Yes, yes. 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 No, don't, don't worry. Just listen up. Listen up offline. Yes. Now listen again. Your mom will pick it up for you. <laughs> Let me explain it to you. One carton of Indomie, mm -hmm. uh, a shirt from okay. every man's uh, clothes. Okay. Uh, there are two copies of Glorious Quran. There are two and copies book. of book on Ramadan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mama. Mm. Just, just tell them thank you very much first. Say where? Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Mm. So, we, we come yeah. to NTA uh, Channel 5, Area 10. Area 10, Old Parade Ground. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you and your parents. Thank you. <laughs> He's very smart. Mm. Yes. Well, you we are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make sure that. Uh, <laughs> that smartness. That's, that's what I'm about. thinking. That's smartness. <laughs> okay. You can't just win and you don't know yeah, where to get you your give thing. Give me gift. I don't know where to collect <laughs> it. Thank you. I don't know where to get it. <laughs> These children, eh, they are digital. Yeah, <laughs> Hello. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. Welcome to Sahul Live on NTA. Good morning, sir. Good, Good morning, morning. Matu. Please, Good what's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kogi State. Ko oh, where in Kogi State? The Lokoja, precisely. Oh, yeah. Koja. Okay, what's your name again? Sayyidu Halima. Sayyidu Halima. All right, you are most welcome. Yes, welcome from Lokoja. All right. So listen up to your question from your mom. Question number one to nine. Sir? Pick a question from questions number one to nine. Question three. Question three. Ha, why and how do we pay zakat? Sir? Why do we pay zakat and how do we pay zakat? Two questions at the same time. We pay zakat to help the needy. Mm-hmm. Then, then uh, how we pay the cat is when you are having money that is up to one million in a year in your account, you didn't touch it, then you can pay the cat out of it two point five uh, twenty five percent. No, you are correct. Uh, 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 which percentage? Sir? Which percentage? <laughs> Twenty-five percent. Ah, no, no, that's too much. Oh, you have increased it by ten. <laughs> Not ten percent. No, no, no. Just chill, relax, take it easy. She first said it all. No, when she said twenty-five, she said two point five. No, no, no. She has even said two point five and said two ten percent. The decimal point is is uh, jumping up and down. She mentioned okay, two point five first. Two point five percent. Aja Halima, did you hear that? Of course. Yes, sir. Yes. What did what did Sheikh say? How many percentage did they just say now? 2.5. Excellent. <laughs> and it's not 1 million. <laughs> the, what is the Nisab? Nisab <laughs> is the minimum amount that the cat is payable mm. out of what you have. But it's not 1 million. It's much more than that. It changes from... It changes, mm. yes. And it's around 2.2 .2 million now. Mm -hmm. like yes, roughly 2.2 mm. .2 million now. Yes. Thank you very much, Aja Alima. You have a say, yes. Mm. All the way from Dokoja. Mm. Mm. Mashallah. We don't uh, have fish, although we, we can't even give you fish. Mm. <laughs> no, Dokoja, they don't have fish. No, that's why. So you. Uh, so they don't have fish. Uh, do you have a like, bank account? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. You send your account details to, read, uh, to this number. Okay. And you write the number of the phone you call with. Mm. Okay, sir. Then when you send it to us, then we also send ten thousand dollars to that account. Allah Akbar. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. 
10,000 is small, but you just Thank manage. You, <laughs> um, you manage the 10,000. <laughs> Will you manage the 10,000 or should you just leave it because it's too small? Sir, it's more than manage. <laughs> <laughs> Your <laughs> uh, well, please help us always pray for those who donate uh -huh, money because I wanted to say it's not my money. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, some people uh, give us this. Thank you very much, Haji Alima. Our greetings to everybody <laughs> there in Loko Jack. That was wonderful. Very rich knowledge. Very, very rich. You know, she knows it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they go to Islamia school. Well, the mm. men are not going. They are not going. Mm. If you start an Islamia school for men and women, that of women will keep on flourishing and expanding. But the men. That of men, it will just die down. Do you know why? Why? No. <laughs> why? <laughs> men are busy doing nothing. Uh, no, they are looking for, they are hustling. Mm. Well, mm. So this hozu, mm. hozu. You should work smartly. No? Hozu. Mm. You don't need to punish yourself. Mm. I think that's part of what you are saying now. <laughs> To just to rearrange their programs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We and did a Walima one year, about 120 people graduate. I will have 110 women. 110 mm -hmm. women. One out of 120. 10 are men. Only 10 men. Only 10. Less than 10%. <laughs> Subhanallah. They are only 7.5%. You are even lucky. So mm -hmm. There will be only 5. 7. 5. 5. So men, take your religion seriously. So <laughs> may Allah bless our horses. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to. Good morning, ma. Welcome to Zahu Live on NTA. Thank you, sir. My name is Halimat. Sorry, Halimat from. From Lukoja. Ah, wait. Come again in slow motion. Ah, you see, you see, that's why I was you seem to so know the question we want to ask you. What's your other name? What's your other name? My father name is Abdukadu. Halima Abdukadu. No, we know it's not the same Abdukadu. person. Yeah. It's not the same it's person. The same we know. Person. We don't. We are not saying you are telling lies. <laughs> don't think we think we are telling lies. No, no, no. But we are only surprised that oh, local are following oh, each other. Oh, uh, we lost that number. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Oh, Subhanallah. Can you explain to me? That's the name of my mother. Allah. 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 Now that is not in Abuja, what does she call Please it? call again, call <laughs> again, uh, <laughs> yeah, Halima, Abu Bakar. Please, please do call again. The line went off at a point. <laughs> oh, Subhanallah. Oh, come back, please. Oh, yeah, Subhanallah. <laughs> Anybody Hello? coming? Hello? Hello? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Subhanallah. What's happening to the line? This one is Subhanallah. Mm. This network is fully. Yes, it is. We can use your phone now. Ah, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> it's for Halima. <laughs> you see, the, the the networks have developed a life of their own this mm. morning. Subhanallah. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Okay. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. welcome mm. to Sahu Live on NTA. <laughs> Salam. Welcome to Sahu Live. This is NTA, Sahu Live. My name is Umu Kretum Tijani. I'm oh. calling from Abuja Life Camp. Umu hmm. Kretum Tijani hmm. from Life Camp Abuja. You are welcome, my daughter. <coughs> how, how, old, thank you, sir. how old are you, Umu Kretum? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, how what? old are you? Fine. Oh, say I'm fine. I'm 12 years old. 12 years old. I will not treat you as... I will not treat you as a 12-year-old girl. I will treat you as a family that you only pick a call on behalf of the family. Yes, so. <laughs> now, pick a question. All righty. Pick a question. One to ten. Number two. Number two. Number two. What is Wakfu and Sadaka? I'm asking you this question not because of you, because I want everybody to support in the family. <laughs> what Please, I repeat the question. What is wakf? And what is sadaka? And what is sadaka? Sadaka is giving out charity to the poor. Okay. Yes. And what is wakf? Um, wakf. It's a term in. Although uh, even that sadaka is not yet complete. Yeah, she has tried. Mm. She, has tried. she has really uh, tried. Actually. It has a lot of features yeah. that makes it. Mm. Please. Mm. Mm. Please let me. Just features. Eventually, you know, in Maliki School of Business. Please let, let, let's, let's, um, okay. let's dismiss her first. Is uh, anybody there with you? Your mom? Anybody around? Don't let them run away. Okay. 
All right, please, sir, I want you to give this yes. my girl something. Can, can I, no. <laughs> she, she, she should be a rapper. Okay, a rapper for you, mashallah. Uh, copy of the Quran. Copy of the Quran. Yes. 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 And a yes. book on Ramadan, because of time. Yes. Very important. Oh, yes. Sorry, because of time, that's mm. why we had to cut it short like that. But uh, right. there's a rapper for my daughter there, please, sir. Uh, and copy of the Glorious so Quran. Make, make it two. So that two. two copies of the Quran, yeah. in, in fact. Mm. 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 Yes. Uh, sorry, we, we will have asked you to answer on her behalf. Mm. All right. But you should have done that by yourself earlier on. Mm. Mm. But okay. please um, tell that our daughter that I'm so proud of her. May Allah bless her Time. and give her al-barika. Mm. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan. So that's about the size of the program for today, and uh, may Allah accept the little we have been able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Prof, please, uh, no, 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 in no, no, five no. seconds, Suhan or Bika for us. May Allah bless you, may Allah bless all of us too. Um, do have a beautiful day ahead. May Almighty Allah accept our act of ibadat. And let's do this again, same station tomorrow. May Allah spare our lives. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.